Welcome to another Torah Tuesday. I have another tidbit to share with you from my work on Exodus that you might find interesting. I've been studying the process of brick making as well as this, the type of slavery that the Israelites lived under in Egypt because I've always been curious and I've heard a lot of students ask, like how does the slavery in Egypt compare to say the slavery of the Civil War era United States or slavery in other countries today. So I found this interesting. The, one of the most helpful commentaries I looked at as I worked on this was George Pixley's commentary on Exodus, a liberation perspective. And what he taught me is that in ancient Egypt at that time, there was a kind of generalized servitude where every resident of Egypt had to give the state service whenever the state demanded it. And so it wasn't specific to the Israelites it was actually generalized to every resident of Egypt. Now, the Israelites had it extra bad, though, because it tells us in, um, in chapter 1, verse 12, the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread, so the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites and worked them ruthlessly. There's actually a sense of disgust. They couldn't stand looking at the Israelites. So there was this generalized servitude, this system of, of how they did labor in Egypt that was combined with racism and, and with disdain for the Israelites. And so that complicated each other to make it a very oppressive situation. Um, if you'll remember from the book of Genesis, it was Joseph's idea for the state to buy up all the land in Egypt in exchange for giving people food and so that they could survive the famine. And so I think what we see is that one generation's solution to a problem becomes the next generation's tool of oppression if that next generation shows greed and a lack of character or lack of compassion for people. Every generation's leadership tends to become more oppressive than the last as each one is just a little greedier and little wants to extract a little bit more from people. In chapter 1 verse 11 it tells us that what the Israelites were building, they were brick makers and we know from other ancient texts and pictures that slaves were the ones who would normally make bricks and in verse 11, it tells us that they put slave masters over them to oppress them with forced labor, and they built Pithom and Ramses as store cities for Pharaoh. So you might be curious about these store cities, like why did Pharaoh need store cities? Probably what's going on here is that Pharaoh is building huge storage facilities attached to the temple where he himself is worshipped. So in ancient Israel, the Pharaoh thought that he was God, and, and because he saw himself as divine, he needed or wanted people to continue to worship him. And so what would happen is after a pharaoh died, the next pharaoh would put up a new temple and do state-sponsored worship of him. And the first pharaoh's temple would kind of languish. What's going to happen to all of the temple servants who work there? The whole infrastructure around it, um, it would just all go to pot, except if Pharaoh actually plans ahead and stores up enormous amounts of food so that for decades, people will continue to worship him as a god. So it's very likely that what the Israelites are building are storage facilities, like imagine great big Amazon warehouses full of food to feed the priests and to make temple sacrifices to Pharaoh. So you can see just how self-serving this is, that this is propping up his funerary cult. So in addition to being oppressive labor, it's also contributing to false worship. So this is why God needs to come and rescue them. They are in a terrible situation where they're the victims of racist oppression and they are in a situation that's compromising what true worship should be for them. Notice that when God enters history, he doesn't just come alongside them to comfort them or to tell them to like persevere or just try to have a good attitude, but he actually breaks them out of this system. He breaks the oppressive system itself and, and brings them to a new place. And this is the good news of the book of Exodus. And the reason why it's been used for so many generations as an example of God's liberating power that actually has political, historical, social consequences. 
spirituality in the Bible is not just a disembodied set of ideas or doctrines, but it actually makes a difference on the ground. That's what we see in Exodus chapter 1, and that's what we see when we look around our world and see how God is at work. So that's our Torah Tuesday tidbit for this week. Join me again next week for another tidbit.